Part 6, Organization and Social Force. Previously, we dealt with that which we understand as the organization of capitalism and the state, see seeking to map out, quote, where we are, end quote. And the organization of libertarian socialism trying to specify, quote, where we want to reach, end quote. To complete the discussion on organization, it will be necessary to expand a bit on social movements and the popular organization, as well as on the specific anarchist organization. Two different levels of action that will seek to answer the question, quote, how do we think, well, how do we, think we can leave where we are and arrive where we want to be, end quote. Completing indispensable elements for our permanent strategy. As Malatesta nicely summarized, quote, organization in general as the principle and condition of social life today and in the future society, organization of the anarchist party and organization of popular forces, end quote. For us, the social transformation we want to take place passes necessarily through the construction of the popular organization, through the progressive increase in its social force until the moment at which it would be possible to overthrow capitalism and the state with social revolution and open the way to libertarian socialism. Furthermore, we argue that the popular organization must be accompanied by a parallel development of the specific anarchist organization, which should influence it, giving to it the desired character. Going forward, we will have further discussions on each of these and on the interaction between one another. At the moment, what is essential is for us to assume there is no way of thinking about this necessary transformation without organization and the progressive growth of social force. We understand today's society as the result of a relationship of forces, or even a permanent conflict, which takes the form of class struggle between capitalism, the state, and other diverse political forces, and that the former are strengthened that is, manage to have a greater social force than the latter, and thus establish power. In this sense, capitalism and the state exert oppression over, the, over other political forces that constitute resistance to them. This resistance can occur in different ways, some constituting greater or smaller political forces, and others not constituting politi political forces. Quote, resistance can be passive, when the agent has no action against the power that, that oppresses them, or active, when the power suffers retaliation on the part of the subjugated, isolated, it has an individual character, or articulated, collective force, end quote. Passive resistance does not constitute a political force, and isolated resistance possesses little social force. Therefore, in order to attain our objectives, we advocate active and articulated resistance, which seeks in organization the permanent increase of social force. For the construction of this resistance, it is necessary to align with those that are in agreement with our proposal for social transformation. Quote, if we want to move forward, if we want to do something more than that which permanently isolates each one of us, we must know with which particular comrades we can be in agreement and with which we disagree. This is especially necessary when we speak of action, of movement, of methods with which it is necessary to work with many hands in order to be able to obtain some results that go in our direction." End quote. What we call today order, or status quo, is the organization of capitalism and the state, which may or may not consider other political forces that provide a threat. To be disorganized, poorly organized, or isolated means not to con constitute an adequate resistance to capitalism and the state, and consequently not managing to significantly increase the social force of the organization that must have as an objective to replace them with libertarian socialism. We can say that, quote, whoever doesn't organize themselves who doesn't seek the cooperation of others and does not offer theirs under conditions of reciprocity and solidarity, puts themselves necessarily in a state of inferiority and remains an unconscious gear in the social mechanism that others operate in their way and to their advantage." End quote. Disorganization, poor organization, and isolation, in fact, 
end up supporting capitalism and the state, seeing as though they do not allow for the construction of the necessary social force. By not taking part in an appropriate manner in the relation of, the, of force or the permanent conflict of society, you end up reprodu reproducing order. Thus, quote, if we do not seek well-articulated organization and association, we will end up not managing to exercise any influence and struggles, and consequently, in today's society, end quote. Thus, quote, those that do not have the means or sufficiently developed consciousness to organize themselves freely with those who have interests and sentiments in common suffer the organization built by other individuals, generally constituted into a ruling class or group in order to exploit, for their own benefit, the labor of others. And the age-old oppression of the masses by a small number of privileged people has always been the consequence of the inability of most individuals to put themselves in agreement and organize themselves with other workers for the production, enjoyment, and eventual defense against those that want to exploit and oppress them. To remain isolated, each one acting or wanting to act on their own without in understanding with others, without preparation, without uniting the weak forces of individuals into a powerful bunch, means to condemn oneself to impotence, wasting one's own energy on small acts without efficiency and rapidly losing faith in the objective and falling into complete inaction." End quote. Disorganization and poor organization are reproduced on the social level of social movements in which one should build and develop the popular organization. With the difficulty of accumulating social force, causing the natural spontaneity of this level not to manage to carry out the set of desired social transformations. At the political level of anarchism, in which one should develop the specific anarchist organization, with the difficulty of influencing the social level to have adequate ways and means, isolation and individualism causes that neither the political nor the social levels exist in a desirable manner articulating neither the popular nor an anarchist organization. Besides this disorganization, poor organization and isolation are hindering forces for establishment of libertarian socialism, as we believe that it can only be built with a lot of organization. Organization means the coordination of forces, or, quote, association with a common objective and with necessary ways and means to achieve this objective, end quote. In this way, we must think of ways and means for the popular organization such that it can overthrow capitalism and the state, and by means of the social revolution build libertarian socialism, its objective. At the same time, we must think of ways and means for the specific anarchist organization, such that this can build the popular organization and influence it, giving to it the desired character and arriving at the libertarian socialism by means of social revolution its objective. Next, we discuss in more details in more detail these two levels of organization. Firstly, we will discuss the social level in which social movements operate and in which we must seek to build the popular organization. Then, the political level and the development of the specific anarchist organization. When we speak about social force, it is important for us to define what we understand by this term. We believe that every individual, as the social agent that they are, naturally possesses a social force that is the energy that can be applied in order to achieve their objectives. This force varies from one person to another, and even in the same person over a period of time. To achieve their objectives, individuals frequently make use of instruments that can increase their social force. Many things can be used to increase social force, such as weapons, information, training, adequate techniques, resource optimization, persuasion, machines, etc. However, the most important instrument for this is organization, which can happen in an authoritarian way, by means of domination, or in a libertarian way, by means of free association. In an authoritarian organization, the social force of diverse agents, for example in the state with an army or in a company with a salaried labor, is alienated. 
putting them in a position of domination in relation to the organization. In these cases, in these cases the state and the boss and causing them to contribute to an alien objective different to their own. This is exactly how the social force of the current system is constituted today. That is, by means of the alienation of diverse agents that contributes to the goals of capitalism, which are not the same as theirs. In a libertarian organization, it is free association or anti-authoritarian organization that produces the increase of social force it always being associated with other instruments. Organization that takes the form of free association is indispensable to our project of social transformation because when, individual work together, because when individuals work together, their social force is not simply the sum of individual forces, but more than this. We look at the example of Proudhon in order to explain the matter, quote, 200 workers set the obelisk of Luxor on its base in a few hours. Do you suppose that one man could have accomplished the same task in 200 days? Certainly not. Because there is an immense strength... End quote. Certainly not. Because there is an, quote, immense strength that results from the union and harmony of workers, of the convergence and concurrence of their efforts." End quote. In the example above, the organization of the workers gave them a collective force, enabling a greater result than the simple sum of individual results. Thus, we can conclude that to be able to carry out our project of social transformation, association is fundamental, because it is through it, and only through it, that we will be able to accumulate the social force necessary to overthrow capitalism and the state. However, for the necessary permanent gain in social force that must occur in this anti-authoritarian form of organization, both at the level of popular organization as well at the level of the anarchist organization, we recognize to be fundamental, quote, a certain discipline, not automatic, but voluntary and reflected. Being perfectly in accord with the freedom of individuals was and will be necessary whenever many individuals, freely united, undertake a collective job or action. This discipline is no more than the voluntary and reflected agreement of all individual efforts towards a common end. At the moment of action, in the midst of struggle, roles are divided naturally according to the attitudes of each one appreciated and judged by the whole collective, some direct and order, others ex execute orders, but no function is petrified, neither is it fixed nor irrevocably linked to any person. Levels and hierarchical promotion do not exist, such that the commander of yesterday may be the subordinate of today. No one is elevated above the others, or, if they are elevated, it is only to fall in the next instant, as waves in the sea always returning to a healthy level of equality." End quote. Obviously, this discipline must not, quote, follow authoritarian, the authoritarian model, both in the oppression of members as well as by of charges that should also consider respect and ethics. It is a great concern for us to differentiate the discipline that we promote here from military discipline, exploitative and oppressive in essence, and that from our point of view does not follow different paths to other authoritarianisms that, that we know well." End quote. In order to differentiate this discipline much preached by the authoritarians from the discipline that we advocate, we choose to use the term self-discipline, affirming that Quote, self discipline is the motor of the self managed organization. End quote. It being for us, together with commitment and responsibility, indispensable for the construction of an anti authoritarian organization that aims to increase its social force. This self discipline, in our view, is less in the popular organization and greater in the specific anarchist organization, varying according to the context. In periods of greater social turbulence, the need for self-discipline increases. In times of ebb, it can be smaller. For us, as we have emphasized, the objective of the popular organization as a form of active and articulated resistance 
is progressively increasingly its social force. Quote, to overthrow capitalism and the state and by means of the social revolution to build libertarian socialism, end quote. This increase of social force can be achieved with various instruments, but primarily the organization of the exploited classes with the greatest number of people possible and a good level of organization, which necessarily implies self-discipline, commitment, and responsibility. Moreover, as we have also already defined, the objective of the specific anarchist organization is, quote, to build the popular organization and influence it, giving it the desired character and to arrive at libertarian socialism by means of the social revolution, end quote. For this, the specific anarchist organization must constitute itself as an organization of active anarchist minority with a high level of self-discipline, commitment, and responsibility. Conceived in this way, quote, organization, far from creating authority, is the only remedy against it, and the only means by which each one of us becomes accustomed to taking an active and conscious part in the collective work, end quote.